I feel the glory of God in this house tonight. I feel the power of God right now. Hallelujah. It's such a privilege <clears throat> to be here tonight, to be among so many wonderful people. Almost half of this congregation raised me. I'm so honored and so delighted, delighted to be here with you. They say ain't no place like home. I'm so grateful for my home, the Pentecostals of Alexandria. <clears throat> However, I'm only five, ten miles away from you. Feels like a long ways. But I am so grateful to be here with you tonight. Not only am I grateful, but Calvary Tabernacle is grateful. We're so honored to be here with you tonight. We don't take this for granted to be able to minister to your ears and to your heart tonight. If you have your Bibles, I thank God for a district superintendent for the Cox. I love you so much. Give honor to you. Give honor to Mother Mangan. Give honor to all the ministers, to the musicians, to the singers. Didn't they do a great job tonight? They did a great job tonight. I give honor to my ministers tonight, their wives. Amen. If you have your Bibles, I'll be coming from 1 Timothy chapter 4. Thank you, Coach, for coming. They're number one in the nation. Great ball club here in our city. Number one in the nation. If you hadn't seen them play, you ought to go watch them play. They are awesome. And I'm so privileged to be able to minister into the lives of those men. I give honor to my pastor tonight. Thank you for trusting me. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for raising me. Thank you for getting on me. <laughs> and I love you. Give honor to Pastor Terry, to the Shocks, to Mr. Maxwell, to, to Andrew, to Gentry, to, to all of you. It is a privilege to be here tonight. First Timothy chapter four. I, I, I got to preach tonight. Somebody said they wanted to hear little T.D. Jakes. I told them that wasn't me. <laughs> 1 <laughs> Timothy chapter 4, I do have a word for this church tonight, and I pray that you open up your hearts and your spirit to receive it. Chapter 4, 1 through 6, Paul writes to Timothy, and he said, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, and having their conscience seared with an hot iron. Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats and which God had created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature, say every creature, of God is good and nothing to be refused. And if it be received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified by the word of God in prayer. If thou put the brethren, and if, if thou put the brothering in remembrance of those things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ. Nourish up in the words of faith and of good doctrine, whereunto thou hast obtained. I want to preach to you on this subject tonight. My attention is to verse 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly. My subject is listen to Jesus. I'm going to say it again. Listen to Jesus. Lord, we love you. We praise and we thank you. I come once again on bending knees asking you to remove me out of the way. Hide me behind your marvelous cross and let your anointing flow now, Lord, and speak to every soul you ordained to be here tonight. But we don't want to hear from man, but let us hear from you and you alone. Open up our eyes and our ears that we may see and hear. Bless us in the spirit and with the spirit. We love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Will you give the Lord one big hand clap of praise? Now I'll take that. Give him one big hand clap of praise. 
<clears throat> Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord God. It was Paul who was speaking these powerful words to Timothy. And this one thing that he magnified that jumped out in my spirit was that now the spirit speaketh expressly. Not a man, but the spirit. It speaketh, Timothy, and it speaketh expressly. The word expressly is defined as this, particularly or specifically. The word specifically is defined as clearly or exactly or how about this one? Precise. When you think about the spirit, it speak it very clearly, exactly, and precisely. In other words, the spirit is very accurate and it never miss its mark. If the spirit tells you that a storm is coming tonight, you better get in your basement, get you some food packed up because the storm is coming tonight. What concerns me about the church is this, is that if God has given us something that is so accurate, that's something that is so error free and something that is correct all the time, say all the time, then why don't we listen to it? Then why don't we listen to it? Question, have the spirit ever led you astray? Have the spirit ever lied to you? Then why is it very hard for us to listen to the Spirit. I remember a story of Jesus when he was taking John, James, and Peter, the Bible said, into a high mountain. You might know it as the Mount of Transfiguration. According to the Bible, Jesus led him up to a high place. And the moment that Jesus separated himself, the Bible said that James, John, and Peter, they saw Jesus Christ shining, shining so, so bright. The Bible said that he shines so bright that no fuller could make it shine even brighter. And then out of nowhere, the Bible said that Elijah showed up. And then Moses showed up while Jesus was yet illuminated, just bright. And then Peter and John and James began to see the two, the three speaking together. And then it was Peter that said these words. He said, it is good for us to be here and let us, he said, build a temple. Three, one for you, Jesus, and one for you, Moses, and one for Elias. Let me just stop here just for a moment to let you see the awesome blessings of God and what he was trying to show everybody here during this time. Jesus is illuminated. He's shining bright and Moses and Elias show up. Moses represent the law of God, the word of God, which comes from Jesus. And then you have Elias, the prophet, Elijah, the prophet who speak the prophetic word, who was given to the prophets from Jesus. And yet you don't see neither one of those eliminated or illuminated. It was all Jesus Christ because the word of God, the prophet, that the word that comes from the prophet, it all comes from here. But that's not the moral of the story. If you continue to read it, the Bible said after that took place, then that was a cloud, the Bible said, that overshadowed them. And out of the clouds came these words, this is my beloved son. And then he says, hear him, listen to him. When I think about the Mount Transfiguration, when that voice came out from heaven, when he was trying to tell John, Peter, and James, listen, that the words are getting ready to come out of him. They are law. They are real. They are anointing. They are dynamic. They are not to be refused. They are for you to listen to. That's why I come tonight to make a statement and to get your ears open, to get you back to the beginning where we used to listen. Listen to Jesus. I believe it was the reason why I didn't make it in the NBA was because I wouldn't listen. I had great leaders like Mike McConaughey and Tim Floyd. I had great coaches along the way that tried to coach me, had great athletic ability, can shoot and play ball. But I stand before you testifying tonight that I know that that is the reason why I didn't make it to the next level because I would not, I would not listen. Listen, Jesus teaches us 
and St. John, why it's so hard to listen to him. Follow me. And St. John, chapter 6, verse 53 through 63, it reads, Then Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. And whosoever eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I would rise him up at the last day. He said, my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. And he that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. As the living Father hath sent me, and I have lived by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. This, he said, is that bread which came down from heaven. Not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead, but he that eateth this bread shall live forever. Watch. These things said he in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Many, many, therefore, of his disciples, when they heard this saying, they said that this is a hard saying. Who can hear it? Who would listen? Eat your flesh, drink your blood. Of course, we know he's speaking in the spirit realm. Of course, we know that he's telling us to digest his word and everything that comes from him should be in you. And we should receive it with gladness and we will be blessed by him. But they said that this was a hard saying. Who could hear it? When Jesus knew in himself, verse 61, that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, he said, do this offend you? Does this offend you? Do my words and what I speak to you, which are life, do they offend you? I only wish that I would just get the truth out of you tonight. That as many times God has spoke to you, the spirit had come and spoke to you, and you got offended time and time at the word of God. Some of you even got so mad, you just begin to walk away. You threw your Bible down, walked away, just mad. God, I heard you speaking, but I'm not doing it. He asked him, he said this, does this offend you? Listen, that's two reasons why people don't listen to Jesus. One, they don't understand what he's saying. They don't have any understanding of what he's saying. And two, when he do say it, they get offended by it. They get offended by it. It was the Jesus that said in 62, what? And if you shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before. He said it is the spirit that quickened. The flesh profited nothing. And the words, he said, that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. In other words, I'm not just not around you, coming to you, ministering to you, just running my mouth for nothing. The things that I am saying to you, that I am ministering to you, they are life and they will save you. The Spirit will come to you maybe when you're in service or while you're driving down the road or you're on your job and the Spirit will speak something to you and tell you to do something. It's trying to spare you from something. It's trying to save you from something. It's not trying to hurt you. It's not trying to shame you. It's not trying to disrespect you. It's not trying to play you. It's not trying to do any of these things. It's only trying to save you for it is the spirit that searches everything it is the spirit that knoweth everything so that's why it's important and that's why it's my job to get you to get back to listening to Jesus look at somebody and say listen to Jesus listen to Jesus listen to Jesus listen to Jesus I never forget many years ago over 15 years ago when I came here and you know my story that I always tell how the Lord pushed me back over the bridge, you know, Jackson Street Bridge. And I don't know if you know what happened after that, but the moment I realized that the Spirit of the Lord had touched me and pushed me back, I remember uh, backing off that bridge, weeping and crying, and I could hear the Spirit begin to lead me. For the first time, I began to pay attention to the Spirit. The Spirit had been speaking to me all along, telling me which direction to go, what to do and what to say. But because of my sinful life, I would never listen and obey the Spirit. But that particular night, I heard the Spirit lead, was leading me to Hira Pilon, and I began to walk there in the cold. And when I got there, it was like God gave me supernatural hearing. It was something about the ears that he had opened up for me. And when I got to that place, I began to sit there shivering, and I began to eat out of the local trash can right there. I grabbed crackers and I, whatever I could to try to survive because I did not know where God was leading me, and I did not know what he was trying to tell me. Then all of a sudden, my ears began to be 
and sharp and I could hear. And I know it wasn't done by my will, it was done by his will. And there there was a woman that was on the telephone. You remember me telling you the story. She was a way off from me and there was no way that I was supposed to hear what this woman was saying. And I heard her mention a place called the Grace House. My ears heard it for homeless men who do drugs and drink and so forth. And I remember just running to that woman and I remember asking her and she gave me the number to Jerry Rollins. But it was God. Not only did he save me from the bridge, but he also began to speak to me and tell me where to go. And he also began to open up my ears so I can hear what the spirit was trying to say to me. Listen to me. You don't have to run around in the wilderness for 40 years. All you got to do is just listen to Jesus. You don't have to go through all the heartaches and the hardship and pain. You don't have to go through the ups and the downs, the high and the lows. All you have to do is listen to Jesus. The Bible says this in St. John. It was Jesus. He was talking to some Jews and they were sitting around him. It's in St. John chapter 10 verse 24. The Bible reads, then came the Jews around about him. And they said unto him, they said, how long dost thou make us to doubt? And if thou be Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them. He said, I told you, and you believe not. He said, the works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But you believe, you believe not. He said, because you believe not. He said, because you are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. In, in other words, Jesus said, I told you and I showed you and still you don't believe me. I told you by my words and I showed you by the works that I've done. And yet it's still hard for you to believe. Have you ever experienced it? I know I have many times you come into the church, the preacher preach, the worship go on, and you got two people sitting right next to each other. And out of a sudden one receive it, one hear it, one receive it. One is broken from fell all out over the floor. The Holy Ghost don't hit them. They speak it in tongues. And the other one just sitting there looking crazy. I mean, you can feel the spirit of God in the place. You can actually see the glory. You can see people. You can see the spirit falling on people. You can see the works. You can hear it. You can see it. You can feel it. But one get it and the other one just sitting there like, mm -duh. have you ever experienced that? You try to, you try to figure out what well, Jesus answered that in the next verse. It's very, very, very simple in verse 27. He said, my sheep hear my voice. In other words, when I speak, if you're of me, you will listen. He said, and I know them, and they follow me. Not only do they hear me, but they follow me. And then he says, and I give unto them eternal life. Wow, wow. And they shall never perish, and neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. You mean to tell me I get all that if I would just listen to Jesus? If I would just listen to Jesus? He said, I give you eternal life. And when the devil tried to take you away from him, he said, no man can. Why? Because they hear my voice. And they follow after me. It's something about listening. It's something about hearing. And I know deep down in my soul that this is the, 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 the tactic and the deceptiveness of the enemy that is trying to dull the ears or to stop up the ears of, of the church. The word listen is defined as this, to give an ear. To hear, it's simple. It's to hear something with, with thoughtful attention. Listen to me. It's to hear something with thoughtful attention. That's someone who is really paying attention to what you're saying. They're really, they're really in tune. They're really listening to you. And I got to get you to understand that it's very important that we get back to that kind of listening. I, 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 I can tell you, I can tell you with my daughter Caprice, when I'm speaking to her, I can tell when she's listening to me, when she's really paying attention to me. And I can tell when it's going through one ear and out of the other. She's got this little thing that she do. You don't mind about me telling them, do you, baby? She'll turn her head to the side like this and she'll look at you like this. When you're really talking to her and you're really saying something to her, she looks like this. She's really in tune. And that's times when you're talking to her and she's looking at you like this. She's just looking straight on past you. She's not here. But when she turns her head to the side and her eyes looking this way, it's a funny look, isn't it? But she's really, really paying attention 
to what I am telling her and she's soaking it in and she's getting it. Don't you know God knows when you're listening to him? Don't you know he knows when you're paying attention to him or when you're just throwing him over to the side? Listen, listen to Jesus. It's, it's very important. That's why, that's why, that's why we need, we need to humble ourselves and we need to, to, to let God be God and help us when he speaks, when he speaks to us. Some of us are so careless when it comes to the spirit uh, speaking to us. Some of us really don't even care. Jesus said this in Matthew chapter 13, verse 13 through 15. He said, therefore, he said, speak I to them in parable, because they seeing see not, and hearing they hear not, and neither do they understand. He said, in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which said, by hearing you shall hear and shall not understand, and seeing you shall see and shall not perceive. He said this, for this people, their hearts is wax gross, and their ears, look at this, they're dull of hearing. Jesus is saying this. And their eyes have they closed. That's an ugly picture to look at coming from a Christian perspective when your ears are shut up and your eyes are closed when Jesus is talking to you. Can you imagine somebody looking like that? It's ugly in the spirit realm. And it's ugly to Christians who know that when God speaks, his words are powerful and we should listen. But to Satan, it is the most beautiful thing that he could see. That when your ears are stopped up, your eyes are closed to when Jesus is speaking to you. It is the most beautiful thing to Satan. And I don't know about you, but living in this hour, living in this day, I don't have time to stop up my ears. I don't have time to let things dull my ears and mess up my ears. And neither do I have time for things to blind my eyes. I got to be ready. I got to be watching. And I got to be listening to what Jesus, to what Jesus what he is saying. The Bible said that in their eyes have they closed, at least at any time. They should see with their eyes, and they should hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. It takes you, listen, being observant and a good listener to get understanding. I'll say it again. It'll take you to be a good observer. And a good listener to get understanding. Most of you don't know this, but for many years when I was living in the Grace House, and after I got out of the Grace House, I observed you very carefully. Not only did I watch you, but I watched your children. I wanted, because a lot of times you can learn a lot from people by watching their children. I had enough sense while I was a homeless man to know that. Just because I was homeless didn't mean I was dumb. Some of you homeless people should have just got up and said amen on that one. But I watch you, I watch you. I used to watch Larry Clark, and I used to, I used to watch the ministers when they came. I watched how they walked, and I watched how they laughed, and I watched you how you played with your children. I was very, very, very uh, observant. It, it, it takes being observant and a good listener to get understanding. And what comes with understanding of the spiritual things are a conversion and a healing. That's why a lot of people are not converted. And that's why a lot of people haven't received their healing because they don't observe things well, neither do they listen. They don't listen. They don't listen. I remember my great years at the Grace House and that there was three things that I learned from my mentor, Jerry Rollins, was I learned the three L's when I was at the Grace House. The three L's are look, listen, and learn. I was one who talked too much. I was one that couldn't shut his mouth. Can I get a witness in the house? I was one who knew it all. I was one that it had to be my way or the highway. Oh, that was just me? That was just me? I was the only one? I thought I had it all figured out and didn't know nothing. Until I got around him and he would begin to tell me in so many ways, be quiet, you talk too much. I didn't like it coming from him, so the spirit had to come back and bag him up. He said, shut up. The spirit told me to shut up. I talk too much. So I understood that I had to, to, to understand the three L's. Look, that's being observant. Listen, and then I can learn. That's how I escaped the grace house, by look, listening, and learning, and learning the word of God, the ways of God, watching how you live for God, and so forth, and so on. It took all of that for me. 
so that I can be where I am today. It took all of that so that I can get it. It was Jesus that used the terminology. He said their hearts are dull. That's their ears, excuse me, are, are dull. That's someone who, when you look at the definition of the word dull, it means they're not clear or it's not loud or something is not exciting or interesting. That's, that's, when, when, when you got preachers that get up here and preach and, and you see people go to sleep, that, 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 that means their ears are dull because the preacher is boring. What he's saying is not interesting. Every now and then I find two or three of them fall asleep on me like that at Calvary. And I can't understand it for the life of me. How can you sleep when I'm jumping all over the place? Y'all lucky y'all got this here down there because I'll be way out there somewhere preaching right now. But I don't see how you can have dull ears and I don't see how you can go to sleep on preachers like me. Can I get a witness in the house? <laughs> it was Paul. It was Paul when he spoke to Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 through 4. He said, I charge thee therefore before God. He says, and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearance and his kingdom. He said, preach the word and be instant in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. He said, for the time, listen, for the time will come. When they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust, shall they heed to themselves teachers, having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned into fables. That's falsehood or, or lies. It was David, that great patriarch. He says in Psalms 40, verse 6, he got a revelation. He said, sacrifices and offerings thou did not desire. He said, mine ears has thy open. Burnt offerings and sin offerings have thou not desired. But it's my ears. It's you opening up my ears that I may hear you, Lord God. I got it in the living, the NIV. I don't know if you have it in the NLT, excuse me. It reads this way, the NLT. David said, he said, you take no delight in sacrifices or offerings. Mm -hmm. He says, now that you have made me listen. He said, I finally understand. He said, you don't require burnt offerings and sin sacrifices. He said, what you want from me, God, is to be quiet and listen to what the Spirit has to say. I'm taking you on a ride. I'm taking you on a ride. I'm taking you on a ride. David said, I got to listen. I got to listen. He said, you want my ear. You want my ear. You want my ear. Listen to me. Listen to me. God is speaking, and he's speaking loud, and he's speaking clear. He's speaking to us daily about your business. You pray and say, God, I need this. He's telling you which way to go. He's telling you when he's going to give it to you. But the problem here is you are not what? You're not listening. You're not listening. The spirit is precious. It's sensitive, and we need to be sensitive to the spirit, to the spirit of God. This is why, the very reason why the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness for 40 years because they would not listen. It was King Saul, the reason why he lost his kingdom because he would not listen. It's the reason why Jonah was in the belly of hell because he would not listen. And finally, it's the reason why God speak, stopped speaking to the children of Israel for 400 years because they would not, they would not listen. Listen to me. God is very serious about his words carrying weight in your life. I have a question for all of you that are listening to me tonight. I have a question for you. How do you feel when your words don't carry any weight? How do you feel when you're speaking to your children and you know what you're showing them and what you're trying to tell them that's going to save them and help them? But yet your words don't carry any weight to your children. How would you feel if your words of your wife don't carry any weight to you? Or the words of your husband don't carry any weight with you? How do you feel? How do you feel? I know how you feel. You get mad. You want to tear somebody's head off. You want to jake them, shake them. You want to get their attention. Do you hear me? Listen to me. I'm trying to save you. I'm trying to spare you from something. 
Well, how do you think God feels when his words don't carry any weight in your life? That's one thing that I can't stand when I deal with people that are mentoring and the people that are under my leadership. When I say something, I mean it. I know there's a whole other side y'all have seen of me. I'm a pastor right now, so I got to be like that. But I can't stand it when you know you've been through something and you've been through a storm and you know you've experienced something and you're trying to tell somebody, hey, don't go left, don't go down that road. I've been down that road and they don't listen. I can't deal with that. But I wonder, I wonder, I got just a glimpse of it, how God felt, Mother Manga, that, that he speaks to us. He, he talks plainly to us. It's clear. And his words don't carry any weight. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder. It was Winston Churchill, the prime minister of the, of the United Kingdom. He said this quote. He said, courage is what it takes to stand up and speak. And then he said, and courage is also what it takes to sit down and listen. It takes courage to sit down and listen. <laughs> I thought it was a good, I thought it was a good quote. Anybody can tell you it takes courage also to come and sit in my office and talk to me. It takes courage to come and sit down in my office and listen to what I'm about to say because they know that what I'm about to say is spiritual. They know what I'm about to say that God is going to speak to me and give them, give me something for, for their lives. Over the years that I have, over the years when I pastored at Calvary Tabernacle, I have learned there are several reasons why people don't like going to the pastor's office. One is because of your stinking pride. <laughs> Two, because they don't want them to know their business. And three, they don't like them for some reason. And I ain't figured out when I get how in the world you gonna not like your pastor and still be at the church. <laughs> I ain't figured out when I get. Can I get a witness? And the and the final thing is that they're afraid to hear what he has to say. They won't listen. They won't listen. They already got it figured out. And they won't listen. And yet God has given us something as precious as Pastor Anthony Mangan to come into his office and hear what the Spirit has told him concerning our, our lives. It's Jesus that said in St. John chapter 8, verse 42 through 45, he said, if God were your father, he said, you would have loved me. For I proceeded forth and come from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. He said, why do you, he asked, not understand my speech, even because you cannot hear my word. He said, ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father will you do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. But when he speaketh, he speaketh a lie, and speaketh of his own, for he is a liar, and he's the father He's the father of it. He said, because I tell you the truth, you believe me not. The words that I speak to you are true, and you believe me not. He said, because I tell you the truth, you believe me not. He said, which of you convinced me of sin? Which of you? He says, and if I say the truth, he says, why do you not believe me? Why is it so hard for us to hear and believe the truth? Why? Then he says, he that is of God, listen, heareth God's words, and ye therefore heareth them not because, now you got a revelation what he means when he says stop throwing the pearls among the swine. They're not listening, They're not of God. You can talk yourself to death, and you can speak to them and cry and weep, but if they're not listening, not of God. That great Solomon, that wise Solomon, he said in Proverbs chapter 8, verse 32, he said, now therefore hearken unto me, ye children, for blessed are they that keep it my ways. Here, he says, instructions, and be wise and refuse it not. He said, blessed is the man mm, that heareth me. Listen, but to get you blessed here, he said, blessed is the man that heareth me and that watcheth daily at my gates, waiting at the post of my door. 
He said, for who so findeth me findeth life and shall obtain favor of the Lord. If you ever want to find God in his favor, all you got to do is watch, is hear him, watch for him, and wait on him. Can I get a witness in the house tonight? It's simple. It's simple. It's simple. I think one of the most powerful scenes in the Bible is the story that I'm about to read to you now, and I'm coming in for a landing. Said I was going to get you out of here early, and I'm right. Jesus Christ himself said some of the most powerful words to a woman just passing by. In Luke chapter 11, verse 27, the Bible said, and it came to pass that, that as he spake these things, a certain woman of the company lifted up her voice, and she said unto him, she said, blessed, blessed, mm. is the womb that beareth thee, and the paps which thou have sucked. And wow, I got a revelation. I understand that blessed, oh, blessed the mother of Jesus. Oh, because of you and, and how she had winged you and so forth and so on. But Jesus put everything in perspective when he spoke opened his mouth, and he said these words. He said, yay, he said, yay, rather. Blessed are they that heareth the word of God and keep it. He said, blessed are they that listen to Jesus. You got it, you got it all wrong. You're trying to receive your blessing this way. and You're trying to receive your blessing that way. But according to what I've been reading and according to what I've been studying, the way to get your divine blessing, the way to get your healing, the way to get your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life, the way to get your children to live, all you have to do, you have to do is just listen. It's simple. It's so simple. It's simple. So what are you saying to me, preacher? I've been saying it all night. You don't listen. You ain't listening. That's why he sent me here tonight to tell you to get back to your first love of listening to him. There's a time he'll tell you to jump, you'll jump. There's a time he'll tell you to get in ministry, you'll get in ministry. There's a time that God might help me, Holy Ghost. There's a time he'll tell you to do something you did and you didn't ask any question. But now because thou have gotten fat, now he speak, you don't even listen. Listen, I'm trying to get us to where God can do supernatural things in your life. But he can't do it to people who won't listen. There's no way, there's no way you can get around it. I'm mindful of a story many, many years ago that broke my heart. I was living right here on Kent Street. We lived here for nine years. I've seen houses uh, that was on side of the road been torn down i'm seeing the, this place change awful lot we stayed there nine years living on kent street beside us we had a neighbor and i would look out of my window and i would see this neighbor him and this this other individual would come they would sit out and drink and laugh and play their music and i would always pray through the window rebuking it in the name of jesus and one day i never forget my neighbor coming over to me and uh, we were talking, and I asked him a question. I said, hey, man, I don't see your friend anymore. He's a very nice dressing gentleman. He had a very nice vehicle. In fact, I found out he had retired from the military, but he did 30 years, and he has his own trucking company, and he was just doing so well. I mean, when I tell you he was blessed, he was blessed beyond measures. And I asked him, I said, what happened to him? I said, I haven't seen him in a while. I haven't seen him. I said, what happened? He said, have you not heard I said, no. I said, what, what's up? He went into his house and he got the newspaper article. And he said, have you read this? And I said, no, I'm beginning to read it. And it was this guy that, that used to come over to his house. He, he had gotten into a car accident. And, 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 uh, but before he got off into the car accident, he had told him, my neighbor, he said, you know, while they were sitting out drinking, 
He said, you know, he said, I know what the will of God is for my life. They just started talking about it. This guy tells me. And he asked him, he said, what is it? He said, God called me. He said, I heard the audible voice of God. And God told me that I was to preach the gospel and live for him. This is what he said to my neighbor. And my neighbor asked me, he said, well, man, what are you doing here drinking with me? He said, why? He said, he said, he heard God, but he ignored it. And he kept on ignoring it. He said, God kept telling him, God kept telling him, and God kept telling him, no, we, we have a long suffering God, don't get me wrong. But let me tell you something, no man know the hour, or no man know the time. Listen. He read the newspaper article. This guy was in his 18-wheeler truck. He was driving and he got into a head-on collision with another vehicle. They say, the, they say the locks jammed up and he couldn't get out and flame burst up in the cab where he was at and he burned alive. My heart just broke inside of me when I was reading it. I had the article on my refrigerator to remind me over and over and over again when God speak, we need to listen. When God tells us we need to do something, we need to do it. It haunted me. Why didn't he listen? Why didn't he believe? Why didn't he obey? Do you think this a game? It's not a game. It's not a game. That's why I'm preaching to you with so much passion because I got to do something to unstop your ears tonight so you can get back to listening to Jesus, to Jesus. The Spirit is speaking tonight. It spoke to me specifically and said, John, he said, tell them that I said to forgive them that have wrongfully misused them. There's some people here, listen, 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 the Spirit is speaking. That some of you here, God has told you to forgive people and you ain't forgave them yet. I'm talking to somebody now. There's people in this very congregation that have done you wrong, that have offended you. And you sit here and you walk past them, you won't say anything to them. Even the Spirit tell you to get up and go over there and put the fire out. You sit there and you fold your arms and you won't even listen. He's telling you tonight. You got to forgive. If you won't forgive, neither will your father forgive you. I don't care what they've done to you. I don't care what they said about you. I don't care how they mistreated your children. I don't care how they got a better business deal than you. Forgive them, he said. The Spirit said, forgive them. Now some of you in here, that's among me, you bitter towards your pastor. And you don't think the Holy Ghost know it. Yeah, I won't have a friend in the world tonight, and you bitter toward your own pastor. You sit here Sunday after Sunday and he feeds you. It's like an umbilical cord coming from him to you. And it has been cut because you are bitter at him. How can you be bitter at the man that weep and cry for your soul? How? There's one thing I can say about some of the people at Calvary Tabernacle. If they find out you bitter and mad at me and talking about me, they're going to do you something. Am I lying, Billy? We don't play that. That spirit of bitterness. But look what it's targeting. It's targeting your pastor. The spirit is speaking. And it is speaking expressly to somebody tonight. Very precise, very well. That some of you, listen, you've been thinking about walking out of your marriage. I'm giving you what he gave me to write down tonight. Listen to the spirit if you want to. That some of you have been pondering on walking out of your marriage. I rebuke that devil in the name of Jesus. Your marriage is a covenant under God. He looked that way when you found him. He might have got a little gray head now, but he still look good. I rebuke that spirit in the name of Jesus. God honors marriages. He honors them. That some of you, listen, the Spirit speak precisely. That some of you, you are hanging around the wrong people. And the Spirit say, leave them alone. How many times does the Spirit have to show you that they are not of God? I'm telling you, there's some people that you got to get out of your Because they're leading you the wrong direction. The Spirit, the Spirit 
The Spirit, the Spirit is speaking. There's some of you that God have asked to get in ministry. You have not got in ministry yet. There's some of you, the Spirit say, that God has asked to get into His Word and you yet won't put down the electronics. You spend hours on smartphones and hours on computers and yet you won't give God any of your time in the Word. The Spirit speak at and is speaking expressly. God said, tell them there's work to do in my ministry. Tell them that it's time to get back to work. Who told you to retire? Who told you to throw in the towel? Who told you to sit on the pew? He said, there's work to be done. The Spirit is speaking and it is speaking expressly. Come on, singers. I don't know who you are, but if I said anything and one of those came out and hit your world, I want you to come here right now. And I'm not going to leave the altars open long. I'm going once. I'm going three times. Going twice. And you can let it go. Get up and come now in the name of Jesus. God, forgive me. God, I'm sorry. Open up my eyes. Open up my ears, God. It's me. I'm standing in the knee. It's me. I've stopped listening to you, God. You speaking precisely. Thank you for being obedient to the word. Come on, I feel the Holy Ghost giving me to do something right now. Come on, lift your hands up toward heaven. Come on, come on. If one of those is in your world, come on, lift your hands up. You got bitterness towards your pastor. Come on down here. You've been thinking about walking out of your marriage. Come on. Come on, that's somebody you know you need to get rid of and get out of your life. Come on. Come on, I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel the Holy Ghost. Come on, I hear the Spirit say forgive. Forgive, forgive him, forgive him. Come on, let him help you. Let him help you right now. Come on, set your hands toward heaven right now. Say, God, you didn't offend me tonight. I hear you. I believe you. You're right. Listen, listen. The Spirit is speaking. The Spirit is speaking right now. Come on, we can't keep playing church. Come on, we can't keep coming in here. And next thing you know, our labor is in vain. We can't do it. No, 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 no. God want to do a supernatural work. But you got to listen. Come on, let the fire, let the fire burn. Let the fire burn. Let it burn, God. Oh, oh, that's it. That's it. Woo! Hallelujah. That's it. Ask him to forgive you. Say, God, I'm not listening. I closed up my ears toward heaven. But I need you to do what you did to David. Touch my ears. Touch my heart so I can listen. Hey. That's it, speak, Lord. That's it, speak, Lord. That's it, speak, Lord. Hallelujah. That's it, go ahead, let him have it, let him have it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Open my ears. Open my ears. Open my ears. Remove anything, God, that would hinder me from hearing your word. Come on. Keep the fire. Keep the fire lit inside of me, God. I feel God. I feel God. That's it. Let him have it. That's it. Let him have it. That's it. Give it to him. My ears are open. Hallelujah. 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 In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. That's it. Go ahead. Let him have it, sir. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come on, God. I'm sorry. I should have been listening. I'm sorry it's my fault, God. I should have been listening. Come on, speak to me now. Tell me what to do. Tell me what to say. Tell me where to go. Come on, Spirit. Speak, Lord. Speak, speak. Hallelujah. Speak Holy Spirit. Speak Holy Spirit. 